Hello there, morning. Uh, here we are on a early morning dog walk. There's Buddy. And we've just come across a couple of mushrooms. Actually, it's now what? Um, coming into the back end of August. So mushroom season starting to really pick up here in the UK and uh, down here. And I've just spotted a couple of um, key little mushrooms, which are always really good indicators, I find, for other good mushrooms. Um, and they are actually edible in themselves, but I have, let's have a look at them. So these, these little puppies are super, super common. Now, you do have to be a little bit careful because they also have a very um, deadly look-alike, um, or very poisonous look-alike, called the panther cap, um, which looks very similar on the top, which has like a brown cap and white spots. Uh, this one, I believe, is the blusher. Um, just from looking at it on top, I've just got a feel for it, but there is a few ways that we can identify for sure which I'll pick it in a second, but the panther cap and the blusher are both part of the Amanita family here. So if you look underneath, if I am able to scrape the bottom, you might be able to see, although it does seem to have quite a tall stem here, but this one will have burst out of what is basically like a, an egg sac or a vulva. Oops. Um, if I can just maybe lift up the whole thing, I might be able to show you. Uh, so you can see that it has a bul Ooh, where's it gone? A bulbous base here, so it's like you know bulbing out at the bottom, which uh, you can't actually see any residue of the egg sac itself, uh, but. That's very typical of all the Amanita family of mushrooms. They, they come out of an egg sac and they burst through. And actually, that's actually what these white bits are. They are basically the, the residue, the, the white stuff, the white mycelium that is left on the cap from when it bursts through. And there's quite a few Amanita mushrooms a bit like that. But, so this is two ways you can tell this apart from the, from the, uh, the poisonous panther cap. Um, which are, can be very very subtle because they can look very very similar uh, but often the blusher down the stem or even around the, the edges of the margin or even on the gills a little bit it, you can see it start to be a little bit pinky and sometimes it's super super obvious it's like really pink um, but you can see like pink shades in here slightly pinky um, so I still wouldn't like 100% conclusively say that that was the reason why but the other distinguishing factor is around here around the skirt around what's left here from when it bursts through uh, from from this point on this sort of rim this ring here and and upwards towards the base of the cap uh, on the panther cap I'm not sure if you can see it here sorry on the on the blusher which this one is it is ridged there are slight fine ridges going up from here to here and on the panther cap i believe don't don't take my word for it but i i believe it's it's smooth so if you were ever in doubt that's one distinguishing uh thing you can do but it is a, it is an edible um i haven't eaten too much of this or well actually i haven't really eaten much of any of it but what i what i love about this mushroom apart from it looking amazing is quite often I'll just poke you back in there. Might get eaten by a deer or something. Um, quite often, it's a really good indicator for seeing seeing other mushrooms um, like seps, like um, even even like chanterelles, like any of your good like wild mycorrhizal type mushrooms, the ones that work in symbiosis with the trees and the tree roots and stuff. Um, it's really really good for. So Danny and I always get quite excited when we see those because it's like, oh cool, what else is round here? So um, really good one, the uh, the blusher. And a lot of people, a lot of my foraging friends that I know and I read online and stuff, a lot of people actually will happily fill their basket up with with the blusher mushroom because uh, it tastes quite nice. Um, I'm, I'm warming up to it, warming up to the idea of it. But uh, for now, I'm sort of uh, focusing on other choice mushrooms. Uh, right now, I'm you know middle of august end of august here in the uk i'm my heart is set on finding chanterelles chanterelles wherever i go uh, because until this year i haven't really ever found 
too, too many, and I definitely don't have like, I uh, thought I just saw one there actually. Um, I definitely don't have too many um, patches in my portfolio for chanterelles, and the ones that I do have are quite, they're not like, um, they're not like a huge minefield of chanterelles. They are a bit limited, a bit sparse, a bit like you feel bad for picking them because there's not that many. So often I just don't pick them and I just let them, let them grow. Um, the other thing that I have done, which I think is a sensible thing to do, if if you do find some chanterelles or a patch of chanterelles and there's not that many, if you want to sort of help them along in the years to come, uh, pick one or two that are medium to mature and then just, uh, carry them and walk them around the woods around where you are and just go and help spread those spores so that you know hopefully it increases the chance of uh, more chanterelles growing there in the years to come but yeah here we are good morning looks lovely here absolutely gorgeous nice heathland And there's quite a lot of mushrooms popping up actually. There's a few that I can see in the distance here. Don't know what these don't know what these little bad boys are. And see this one interestingly, this is worth showing you. Because I believe this, from just having a first little look, is also a blusher. But it it's obviously got a cap that is it may not be a blusher, but I'm thinking this cap is just really faded white um, I'm just gonna leave it but I think that could also be a blush you know it's got the it's got the skirt definitely an amanita for sure uh, but yeah just to share that with you because if that is a blusher I'm not gonna pick it to tell for sure but um, it just shows you there's quite a range of color caps Usually they are all brown, but I think the I think the rain and the water has has an impact on this one. Um, so yeah, that just that just gives you some sort of um, idea about how varying certain mushrooms can be in terms of colour, um, which can actually be quite troublesome if you're trying to identify them. Um, so you should always be careful when you're picking wild mushrooms, as they say. Um, yeah, anyway, good morning, and I'll see you guys later. If you like the video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and uh, uh, subscribe and share, and all that jazz. And I'll speak to you and see you soon on the next one. Bye.